Here we are going to go through the fundamental uh, principles to be considered uh, while designing a plastic component. So, uh, the major things to be considered while designing a plastic component are the consideration of wall thickness, uh, the maintenance of draft angle, the requirement of ribs and cassettes, as, and also some of the other parameters. Uh, we'll quickly go through that. Uh, the first one is uh, uniform worthiness. Uh, maintaining uniform worthiness is important when you consider uh, designing a plastic component because uh, difference in worthiness causes uh, different cooling in different areas, uh, causes shrinkage and warpage. Uh, during the molding process, the thick sections of the part tend to pull inward, uh, creating stresses in marks or voids, uh, and also uh, thinner sections cools quicker and stress can build in the part between the uh, thinner and six thicker sections and resulting in part warp page. We will see some of the uh, issues caused by difference in wall thickness. And now we know that uh, the difference in wall thickness causes uh, shrinkage and this shrinkage can cause us uh, majorly four different defects. Uh, the first one is in marks and second is void and third is the stress in different areas of the part and also the warp pressure the difference in shrinkage causes warp pressure of the component as well and the second parameter to be considered is uh, the draft angle uh, draft angle is really important because uh, when the part when the plastic component is ejected out of the mold uh, the proper amount of draft angle has to be given uh, in order to eject the part without any damage. The draft is required on all the parts in the direction of the mold movement in order to allow the parts to release or uh, reject from the mold properly. Most of the parts require a minimum uh, of 0.5 to 1 degree draft angle but also some of the parts may can have 1.5 degree to 2 degree as well. Uh, it's based on the size of the plastic component you design. The picture shows an example of a simple plastic component with a draft angle. The third design consideration is uh, the amount of ribs, the amount and dimension of the ribs. Addition of ribs enhances part strength and stability, which increases strength and uh, uh, increases the ability of the parts to bear higher load. Let us go through some of the guidelines of uh, rib design. The rib thickness should be less than the wall thickness. Uh, the recommended thickness is approximately 60 to 80 percent of the nominal wall thickness. Adding more ribs can uh, adding more ribs can add more strength and stiffness to the part. It is better to add more ribs than making a thicker part. Uh, ribs should be spaced at least two times the normal wall thickness from one another so to improve the mold flow. Uh, rib height also to be less than three times the normal wall thickness of the part. Uh, in some instances, if a thick rib is required, uh, you can always uh, uh, a part of material to be cored out from the bottom of the rib to allow you uniform wall thickness. This will help to reduce the shrinkage or swing mark during the cooling process. At the base of the rib, where it intercepts with the nominal wall, a radius of 25 to 50 percentage of the general wall thickness should be included. Uh, a minimum radius of 0.4 mm is suggested in this area. This will basically eliminate the potential stress concentration and improve the flow and cooling characteristics of the rib. Uh, when it exceeds 15 percent of the nominal wall thickness, a material mass develops and uh, it can increase the risk of having stresses, voids and sink marks. Uh, let us see an interesting example which demonstrates the benefit of ribs. Uh, this is an AP analysis uh, done on a part. Here you can see a uh, two, two design of a a box with a dimension 6 inch by 8 inch made up of ABS material. Uh, the one design is with the ribs and one design is without ribs. Uh, the ABS has a yield strength of 2900 PSI. Uh, and we are looking to have a safety factor of uh, uh, 
minimum three. So when a 50 LPM force is applied on this uh, new tube design, uh, the maximum stress uh, uh, etc. on this uh, first design with the ribs is 825, located in the rounded features of the uh, of the box. And uh, uh, the stress uh, maximum stress on the uh, design without ribs is like 1288 psi. Uh, when Evaluating this maximum stress with respect to the yield strength of the ABS, uh, you can see that uh, the yield strength of ABS is 2900 and maximum strength of red is uh, 825. Uh, that means it has a factor of safety of 3.5 because uh, the yield strength is 3.5 times higher than the maximum stress, etc., on the box. Uh, whereas in the second design without ribs, uh, the maximum stress is 1288 psi. Uh, that means uh, when compared to the yield strength of ABS, uh, 2900 psi, uh, it has a safety factor of 2.3, which is much lesser than uh, 3.5. So we are looking for a safety factor of at least 3. So it is evident that uh, how our ribs are uh, helping us to design a stronger and rigid compound which has better load carrying capacity. Also it is important that the orientation of ribs to be uh, considered um, with respect to the loading condition. Uh, you have the first design and second design with the ribs in horizontal direction and vertical direction. Uh, uh, the, you can see the second design having more deflection because the ribs are not oriented in the right direction and the first design having the lesser deflection so this has to be considered while uh, orienting the ribs while designing the plastic component the fourth important parameter to be considered while designing plastic component is uh, cassettes and bows uh, we can see more details into that uh, in this image you can see uh, two bosses on the left and one boss on the right. Uh, the left side two bosses are uh, supported by ribs and the right side boss uh, is uh, supported by four cassettes. So we'll look into the guidelines of the cassettes. Uh, the cassette thickness uh, should be less than the wall thickness. Uh, the recommended thickness of the cassette is 50% of the nominal wall thickness. And also the cassette uh, height, recommended height is uh, 40, T is the wall thickness of the component uh, and the recommended width of the cassette is 2T, again T is the wall thickness of the component and also the spacing, the recommended spacing between two cassettes is at least a two times the wall thickness of the component. Uh, here you see uh, another study. Yeah, another FEA study conducted on a boss with the cassettes and without cassette. Uh, here is like a 5 LPF force is applied on the same uh, box material, pair of ABS. Uh, so you can see the deflection uh, on the first design and second design. Uh, uh, the deflection of the boss uh, without the cassettes is likely four times higher than the uh, pose with the cassettes. Uh, so you can see the comparison of is just uh, acting on both the design with the cassettes and without cassettes. Uh, you know, um, yeah, this also indicates that the uh, stresses on the pose uh, without cassettes is like more like a, more than double uh, what we see in the left side uh, design with the cassettes. Uh, let us see some of the other parameters also to be considered when designing the plastic. The two things which I covered here is uh, uh, giving the right radius on the corners and also choosing the gate uh, selection at the right location. So if you see the radius, uh, the inside radius of the corner should be at least half of the wall thickness and outside radius of the corner should be equal to the part thickness uh, plus the inside radius. So you see that uh, if its inside radius is R, uh, it is supposed to be like uh, half of the thickness 
and in outside radius capillary is 1.5 times the uh, thickness of the part. Uh, next is gate location. Gate location is also very important to get uniform cooling uh, during the molding process. Uh, there are multiple softwares uh, used across the industry to uh, to evaluate the mold flow. Uh, that also helps to understand how fast the different areas of the part cools and how fast the mold reaches in different areas of the part. Uh, and all these parameters. Uh, if you see the examples in given here, uh, this is the same plastic component with gate location 1 and gate location 2. Uh, in the in the first design, uh, I, where the gate location is uh, in the back side of the part, uh, it takes time for the plastic molten material to reach to the uh, end of the part. But whereas in the second uh, design, uh, when you choose the gate location to uh, the time taken to reach the mold in the, all the corners of the part is almost the same or approximately same and this allows the part to cool uniformly and uh, eventually get the better results when you make the part in section molding. Uh, thank you very much and these are the major parameters to be considered but uh, there are a lot of other parameters as well. Uh, I'm planning to upload a few more videos which uh, uh, majorly talk about the design considerations and um, the plastic injection molding defects uh, hopefully it will be helpful uh, please share your comments and uh, suggestions thank you